taking a trip from New York to Washington in a metal tube at 700 miles per hour. Sounds a bit like science fiction, but could your seat on the Hyperloop be arriving sooner than you think? This week, SpaceX founder Elon Musk issued a provocative tweet saying he's received verbal government approval to build the system. Here to talk about it, Tim Stevens, editor at large at CNET's Roadshow, which covers transportation technology. Tim, good morning. Good morning. How realistic is this? Uh, it's still pretty early days. Uh, as far as we can tell, those conversations were with the White House. A White House representative said they'd had positive conversations. Uh, that's pretty far from actual verbal approval. Mayor de Blasio's office here in New York said uh, that this was the first time they'd actually heard of it when the story broke. <laughs> so uh, we still a long way to go. So tell us a little bit more about this. What would this entail? The basic idea is to create a low-pressure series of tubes that go underground, running from New York City to Washington, D.C. Uh, and because they're low-pressure, you can put a, basically a train inside of them, and without wind resistance, they can go over 700 miles an hour, which would get us there in under 30 minutes versus now, you know, a couple hours at, at least. Yeah. Where is the technology on this right now? Still very early. The technology is progressing, though. We're seeing some demonstrations that are starting to get there. Uh, various companies are starting to compete. It's almost becoming like an underground space race where various companies are trying to one-up each other and get there faster. Uh, one company uh, called Hyperloop One has demonstrated a system that actually works, but thus far they've only gotten up to about 70 miles an hour. So we still have uh, still have a long way to go. And sorry, what about Hyperloop's plans? Where would those be? So the Hyperloop is basically this this overall concept for this technology. E Elon Musk kind of ideated the idea, put it out there, and then basically. Gave gave the idea out there to anybody to develop who wants it, basically kind of open sourced it. So now there's this competition going where multiple companies are trying to develop this technology sooner than anybody else and bring it to market sooner than anybody else. You mentioned Hyperloop One, which has actually tested a prototype in the Nevada, Nevada desert, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. So we've seen a couple demonstrations from them, and they've actually created a closed-loop system. So they're really getting pretty far along. But the problems here aren't so much the technology. They're more to do with regulation and getting the permission for land use rights, for example, to actually build these things. We've seen so many systems, high-speed train systems and tunnel systems that have been shut down by uh, environmental studies and things like that. And there's a long way to go on that front. When you say long way to go, maybe this is tough to do, but so when are, <laughs> when are we looking at it? Is this in our lifetime that we might see it? Well, I mean, one of the closest parallels we can look at here in New York is the Hudson Tunnel Project, which has been going on for decades now. And that needs to go about two miles underneath the Hudson River. That's The cost there is expected to be about $11 billion or more. Uh, and it, again, it's been going on for decades. Musk wants to go 200 miles between New York City and D.C. Mm -hmm. So the cost, you've got to figure, is going to be some exponent on top of that. And the amount of time, the land use regulations, that's a huge problem to get through. The, the Hyperloop isn't the only transportation system Musk is developing, is it? I mean, he's working on, he wants an underground auto system? Musk there? has got a lot, of, a lot of great ideas, a lot of crazy ideas. A lot of these are kind of borrowed from science fiction, which is great to see, too. So the yeah. Hyperloop was actually a, a, a technology that was ideated hundreds of years ago. But Musk also wants to create this underground series of tunnels for cars. The idea being you'd park in a special parking area. Your car would gracefully drop below the surface, and then it would enter this series of tunnels. It would be shuttled along to where you want to go. And then when you get there, it would pop right up, and you'd be at your destination. No traffic to worry about. I want headaches. this to work really badly. I, I, do, too. <laughs> I, I do too. But, uh, you know, in the future of autonomous cars, you have to wonder do you really even need cars in this situation? If it can I just know. drop you up where you need to go, maybe it can just put you outside your building. The reality here, you say autonomous cars. I'm thinking we've talked about flying cars yeah. as well. Yeah. I, I mean, what is that? Is it above ground? Is it flying in the sky? Is it below <laughs> ground? What is our next resource that it, we're it, It's to? definitely going to be a combination of all those things. And that's pretty exciting to think about what that's going to look like. But autonomy is coming much more quickly than we think. I mean, we see there's a Volvo has self-driving cars in Sweden right now that you can buy. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of pilot programs here in the U.S. And Tesla, of course, another Elon Musk company, is doing a lot of great research on autonomy, too. That's all coming really, really quickly, and it's really exciting to see. Tim Stevens, thank you very much. Thank you.